So let's say you got a stick loader sitting around at the house and you want to learn how to TIG weld, but you don't want to have a whole lot invested in it. So you want to go out and buy a TIG welder and spend a couple hundred dollars. Here is a relatively cheap option where you can TIG weld with a stick welder. So the main thing you need to be able to TIG weld with a stick welder, first off, you've, you've got to have some shielding gas. So you got to get a bottle of argon or borrow one, bum one from somebody. You need a flow meter and the main thing that lets this all be possible is this power lug and your gas bottle the gas line threads into one side of the lug your gas line threads into one side on the right and then you've got a hollow power lug that your TIG lead can thread into on the left side so all you've got to do is clamp your power lead from the stick motor onto here to provide power to your TIG lead. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to get that set up. Does anybody know what polarity you need to TIG weld? To TIG weld, you want polarity to be set to DC power for steel, and then you want your electrode to be negative. So, I've got this pretty close. Just need to go up here and check. So, here is my ground. My ground set positive, and this is going to my stinger for the stick rod, but it's going to be connected to the power lug for the TIG welder, and it's going to make my electrode negative. So ground is positive for TIG weld steel, and your power going to your electrode for your tungsten is negative. So now we got that set. Just verify the polarity is correct. And then come down here after verifying that. And all we gotta do to make this stick welder a TIG welder is power it. It's a major component. That's the major component right there. It's just powering your TIG lead with the stick welder. Now this doesn't give you any kind of fancy start. This is simply a scratch start. So uh, if anybody that has a stick welder that's looking to TIG weld, you're probably familiar with the way that you start to weld. You've got to scratch or bump or something along those lines of uh, the stick rod on your material to start the arc. You're doing the same thing with the TIG. You're just going to touch it down briefly, lift up, and that will initiate the arc. I'll go ahead and turn the gas bottle on. Went ahead and ground a nice fresh point on the tungsten. One of the problems I run into, maybe not everybody will, is that when you gotta use a scratch start setup, I contaminate the tungsten pretty often. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast there. I mean, you've, you've got to touch the tungsten to the metal to start the arc. And if you don't lift it up quick enough, like soon as the arc initiates, because it starts the same way that stick welding does. Like soon as you touch down, scratch start, it's, it, it can start the arc there. So if you just touch down and you stick a little bit, or if you don't bring it up fast enough and you heat the very tip of the tungsten, you can contaminate it immediately. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, really good way to have an improvised stick welding setup. It's not ideal by any means, but it can definitely get a lot of work done. So this little Harbor Freight stick welder I've got, it's not the strongest piece. Um, it does work. And if you've noticed my fancy high class welding wire here, is simply a 035 and 045 MIG wire clipped off. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on and we'll do some tack welds first. Just attack this piece in place. So when you want to break the arc with a scratch start setup, you don't have any way to terminate it. You've just got to lift up real quick and then just as quickly bring it back down so you can still shield the molten puddle as it's cooling. You don't want to just whip it away and then uh, get a crater or porosity or cracks in your weld. So the quicker you can bring it away and then bring it right back down, you'll terminate the arc and you'll still shield the weld. Put one more down here. So I stuck that one just a little bit starting out and let's see if the camera will focus by 
kind of highlight it in front of that shadow, you can see part of the tip's already broke off. And that's just where, when I touched down, I stuck it. And in order to start the arc and lift off, I had to break the tip. So let me put a fresh grind on that. And then we'll show you some welds with it. Probably still just as hard to see as it was before, but now that it is sharp. So for anybody that hasn't TIG welded before, I like to keep my tungsten stick out right around 3 eighths of an inch. Especially if I'm doing a corner joint like this, where the gas flow will kind of puddle up in the corner and provide decent shielding. If it's breezy out, or if I'm doing a real flat weld, somewhere that's open, corner joint, I'll keep a tighter stick out, just to help shield it better. Mainly because I only have one size cup. If I had a gas lens or something, it might be a different story. But I'll give it about a 3 8 stick out, and that way I can get down into that corner and weld it decently. Let's move back over here. straighten this wire out a little bit curved wire is not very fun to weld with especially when you're trying to feed it as you go rather than just like a lay wire all right let's see if we can make a weld by the way this little stick welder set at 80 amps Shield it while it cools down, just for a little bit. 10 or 15 seconds is great. Not to mention this isn't critical, so if I didn't shield it, it wouldn't hurt for this purpose. I wish a GoPro would focus up close, like if it had a macro, micro setting, small picture setting. But since I don't, I'll get pretty close to it and hopefully you got a big enough screen to see that there we go we got some nice little tig weld with the stick welder i think i have some 332 rod in here let me take a look around and maybe we'll play with a bigger weld i had some 332 sitting right here in the scrap pile probably gonna have a very limited range of motion It's 332nd, wire, 80 amp, big road with a stick rover. By the way, this is a 100% argon shielding gas. Typically, if I had enough amperage, I would try to see single dab. But in this situation, with the low heat output, I'm doing a dab and then working it from bottom to top of the joint, making sure it's got a decent tie-in at the at the base, and we just overheated the uh, yeah we just tripped a breaker okay well we got a pretty decent little weld in so I just tripped a breaker so I'm probably done welding uh, for right now but with a low heat output like this I'd start once I got the molten pool I would dab a little bit right in the middle work it from the bottom to the top of the joint and just kind of keep doing a upward C motion sort of um, to work it from the base to the 
vertical material, making sure they get tie in in the middle section. And either way, hope you could see that. So stick welding with a or TIG welding with a stick welder really isn't all that hard. You just need that power lug and you know bomb a gas bottle and flow meter off of somebody so you can try it out and see what you think before you spend all that money on a regular old TIG welder for you know six or seven hundred dollars. Um, this thing was 150 bucks at Harbor Freight. If you've already got one, then I think this lifting lug or this power lug was like I'm gonna say ten dollars. I got the TIG lead with the ceramic for 25 bucks. I got a gas line and the flow meter for I want to say that was like 30. That might have been second hand, I'm not sure. And the bottle out the door with gas was right around 180. So hope you guys like this. I'm gonna put some pictures of this up on my Instagram so you can maybe get a better quality picture of the weld. Um, and it's just improvised builds on Instagram. But like, subscribe if you want to see some more. If you want to see something particular, and I'm always welding or fabricating or working on something, you know, put a comment down and let me know what you want to see. I mean, if you liked it, thanks. Bye.